What kinds of technologies will change the trucking industry that we know today? Editorial Director Lou Smirlis led a discussion of carriers, shippers, drivers, human resource professionals, and truck technicians at the Fast Forward, an inside look at the future of trucking presentation for CITT's Toronto Area Council. Autonomous trucks, smart trailer technology, what's in the future for trucking, and how far away is it? For the people who would be purchasing, driving, maintaining such technology, does it excite or does it scare them? I say bring it on, let's see what happens, but um, it's whether the traveling public is going to mm -hmm. accept it or not. That, mm -hmm. That's the biggest issue, right? Mm -hmm. you know, but but you, you, you raised a great point there. We're talking about driver shortages. 20 years down the road or 15 or 20 years down the road, this type of technology may mean you that you're not going to have a driver shortage 15 or 20 years down the road. Oh, oh, yeah. Just by platooning trucks. I mean, you know, if you're mm -hmm. platooning, I don't know what kind of numbers you were talking about, but uh, you get rid of four or five drivers right there. Or does it Which we're sort of doing now yeah. with LCVs, right? Will platooning technology replace more drivers on the highway, leading to more need for regional city drivers? I would agree with that. I mean, I, I think it would also allow us to now attract, although a smaller number of drivers, you can now attract a smaller number of drivers. I wouldn't call them drivers, you can call them engineers. It's like, it's like the, the pilots in a plane. You get into a plane, get into the, into the plane. You always look left, just make sure that they're old enough and they can handle the plane. Um, but ultimately, the plane can do the plane's job without the two of them. But I would be walking right off the plane if there was nobody sitting in those two seats. Mm. So I think the, the public's probably not ready for a driverless truck, even if it works 100%. But I think what we can offer the new driver, engineer, whatever you want to call them, is something more than just driving. If you can program the truck from a, from, a, you know, from a mechanical standpoint, try to make it proactive, just do certain things that you weren't and you can't do as you're strictly driving, but now you can do that as an, you know, a truck engineer. If we move to a world of autonomous vehicles and drivers are expected to do other things, what challenges does that present in terms of proper driver training? Does having fewer hours behind the wheel cause concern? That causes me a lot of concern right off the bat. We're the kind of company that we strive everybody to be at a certain level. And we expect that of all of our drivers. And to go to an autonomous kind of environment, I have to admit, I would be very hesitant of it. I, uh, maybe the platooning thing I could see, but the traveling at highway speeds and not having full control, I'd, I'd be, I have to admit, I'd be a little bit nervous at that. What are the concerns of those who maintain the technologies? Well, I'm sure we've all had a blue screen come up on our computers mm -hmm. at home, right? You're euchred. Your computer at work, you're even more euchred, right? Uh, truck ECMs do the same things. Um, there has to be fail-safes and very good fail-safes put in place. <clears throat> the autonomous truck in, in Nevada, you know, th there's many backup systems for one going down and there's a driver in there. I don't think uh, for a long time we're going to get to a place where th there won't be a driver in the truck, somebody skilled enough to take over if the system fails. Let's face it, we're doing business in Canada. Um, you know, there's, there's people out there that say um, trucks won't break down in the future. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Not while there's, uh, you know, sodium chloride being put on the road every day and mm -hmm. eats away at wiring harnesses and battery voltage when it's minus 40 doesn't keep up and, you know, we're a different monster. Uh, you know, we all have friends in California and technology works really well down there. It's a lot different here in the, in the great white north. Many of these new technologies will require an engaged, trained driving force. I think transporta surface transportation in North America, if you look at trucking and railroading, uh, it's an old economy industry. Um, we're not in Silicon Valley. Um, we still need lots of big physical pieces of equipment to do our job and pieces of equipment are, are the same from a long time ago. Um, anything that we do that's going to, you know, like Angel touched on it earlier, to change the nature of the work, we're still going to need skilled people. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if we do make leaps and bounds on the technology side, you know, I think it's reasonable to think that kids in the future are going to learn a lot more technology-based skills at the high school level uh, and, and maybe the college level, and that's going to behoove us to, to them in the future. I think we're in the early innings of, uh, of a trucking consolidation um, cycle in North America. And if you look at um, airlines and railroads over the past 20 years, uh, we've gone to two railroads, uh, two airlines in Canada. 
and you know, trucking is going the same way. I mean, the past month we've seen um, two multi-billion dollar deals. Uh, UPS bought Coyote and XPO bought uh, Con uh, Conway. Um, so to answer your question, well, why are these companies doing that? Um, it's because a small mom and pop carrier is going to have an impossible task of keeping up to date with the technologies, the regulatory environment, the safety environment, uh, and the access to capital to afford new equipment. So uh, I think for the technology reasons and for a number of other reasons, um, you know, being the small five truck fleet is going to be harder and harder. Thank you.